Oh. Hey guys, um, different camera angle. I know there's still a mess here. Don't worry, I'm I'm in the process of cleaning it. Um, no, that's not vodka. Um, it's coffee time with carpet time. Time with carpet time. That works. Oh, lovely beans. Colombian. Dark roast. I was trying to go live yesterday. Um, however, my ISP decided to take a shit on me. There we go. Yeah, my ISP decided to take a shit on me. And so. Yeah, that kind of sucked. And after they took a major shit on me, they finally sent the technician out. But the technician didn't have the right kind of router. I'm sorry, it's called a router, not a router. Uh, didn't have the right kind of router. Um, and so they gave us the residential router where I'm on a business connection. So... Because apparently the business router uses a different protocol and a different two things and whatnot. But um, well, they're out of those routers. So they're waiting for more to get in. Um, and so it's going to be at least a week. According to them, that I, I can't stream. But I can upload content, hence that's why I'm doing videos and stuff right now. Um, I guess I could do... Like a... a, 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 a um, uh, a uh, coffee time with Cobra, real like li live kind of thing, but I can't do gameplay and uh, stream at the same time. My internet connection just can't handle it. I'm I've gone from so-called 400 megabytes down to 90 megabytes, which translates to about four megs up, and I need a minimum of five uh, to stream at decent quality for you guys. Uh, that's not including the internet connection required to play the game, log into servers, etc, etc. Um, so yeah, there's that going on. Uh, during that, yesterday's call it failed stream, I was going to tell you all at the same time, instead of just this, that and the other and blah, 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 blah. I was going to tell you all at the same time, so I figured I might as well just tell you now. Um... I had an MRI on the 10th, um, and it showed some more relevant information as to what's going on with me health-wise. Um, the clots in my lungs are gone, which is good, which is good news. Uh, the clots in my heart are gone, again, good news. However, the clot in my brain uh, has stopped shrinking. It's uh, stayed a specific size now. So it's not grown, but it's not shrunk either. Uh, and it's putting pressure on my left uh, 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 optic nerve, uh, which is what's causing me to black out. Uh, if you guys don't know, uh, what led me to go into the hospital on the second of the year, like the second day of 2023, uh, I was in the shower and I blacked out and woke up on the floor. Uh, I, didn't, I didn't know what had happened. Um, but I'd fucked up my shoulder, my elbow, my ankle, my ribs, my hip, my head, uh, and I was having severe chest pains, and I genuinely thought I was having a heart attack. Uh, so I went, they saw me, they x-rayed me, they said that uh, I've got some bruised, you know, some, bru some deep, bru deep tissue bruising and whatnot, and that there's some black specks on the x-ray in my lungs, and, uh, around my heart and I'm like okay great cancer because I've had cancer three times in my life um, and they took some blood and my white blood cell count wasn't that high which means it's not cancer my body's not treating it as an infection I'm like, oh, going, oh, fuck, fuck, fuck. so it was like huh so they found out it was eventually it was, it was blood clots and so they put me on warfarin, which is a blood thinner. Um, and so 
the clots did shrink and have now been absorbed basically by my body, which is good. Um, which is what led to the second heart attack I had. Uh, well, thought I was having. I was getting ready to go to the gym with my roommate and I was deathly pale white, as white as this coffee cup. Which for an Irishman is white. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. And um, my, my roommate was like, dude, sit down, you look like death warmed up. I looked at my smartwatch. I love this thing. This is the best thing I've, I've, I've purchased before the pandemic. Um, and it was telling me that my blood pressure was 177, uh, which is tachycardic. Um, cold 999, they said it was going to be about 40 something minutes till an ambulance can get to me because the ambulance service here where I live was on strike. And I was like, fuck that, I'm walking. And so I walked to the hospital. Yes, I walked to the hospital. Um, walked in because it, I didn't come in on an ambulance or through an emergency service vehicle. I had to wait. I walked in, waited in line, took a video. It's on my Instagram. I took a video uh, and the queue was out the door. There was chairs waiting outside the building for people to be seen. So I was like, great, I'm going to die. That's the first thing that went through my head. Great, I'm going to die. So, I um, waited my turn, walked to the lady in, she's like, name, gave her my name, gave her my date of birth, gave her my address, gave her everything, and she goes, what are you here for? I'm like, I think I'm having a heart attack. And she, she was literally doing this, she didn't even once, not once, look up at me until after I turned around. And she goes, take a seat. That was it, just take a seat. So I staggered over to a chair sat there people were just staring at me like is this dude all right because i was sweating profusely pale chest pains having a hard time breathing and um eventually god bless this woman who i i, I failed to remember her name she was sitting two seats down from me and she was having an asthma attack and couldn't breathe and was coughing profusely and just could not breathe and was turning red so i got up staggered over to the nurse banged on the glass and said can you have someone look at this lady she's she's she can't breathe and that's when the nurse looks at me and she's like are you a zombie because i literally was so pale I, there was no blood in my my face my body everything else i was struggling to stay conscious um i was dizzy uh sweating profusely the the nurse came out and went to help the lady, helped her, gave her some oxygen to stabilise, and she walked past, she saw me, and she was like, are you all right? I'm like, I think I'm having a heart attack. And the lady's like, you what? I'm like, uh, I'm going to go sit down and wait again. And she's like, no, you're fucking not. She dragged me through, um, took my blood pressure. My blood pressure was through the freaking roof. Um, and... She immediately tried to find me a bed. Couldn't find me one. Um, because some of the beds, some of the beds were empty, but the rooms weren't clean. They weren't sanitized because, again, some of the staff was on strike. And so I genuinely thought to myself, "I'm going to die because of Rishi Sunak, because of our prime minister, someone none of us voted for." But somehow managed to house of cards weasel his way into number ten Downing Street. I'm sorry, I would I I would rather have a general election right now. And you see how fast he gets kicked out of ten Downing Street. Same as fucking Khan, the mayor of fucking London. That guy's head so far up his ass. Ugh. When he burps, people was not sure if he farts. Dirty bastard. He's one of the most corrupt wankers that there is. Anyway, um, got seen, laid there. Female doctor came in, looked at me. She looked at my charts, um, and she was like, "What drugs have you taken?" I was like, "None." 
And she goes, what do you mean? I'm like, I don't take drugs. And she goes, okay, what medications have you taken? I'm like, just my antidepressants and some vitamins, you know? And she was like, how many did you take? I was like, the prescribed dose. And she's like, well, from the look of you, it looks like you're on some someone's slipped you something, some kind of drug. She was she was adamant that I was high, that I was coming down from a high, that I looked like all I was was just a druggie. And the admitting nurse who admitted me showed her my blood pressure chart, and the fact that my blood pressure hadn't gone down; in fact, it had gone up. And she's like, "He's not on drugs," so. They took some blood, came back clean. No, no, drugs. Not even marijuana. Nothing. I don't. I don't do drugs. I don't do drugs. I'm boring. <laughs> I'm straight edge. No drugs. No drink. Um, not anymore. Anyway. Uh, in my youth, I did, but not anymore. And so, she came back. She apologized. She was like, "I'm sorry. Just from the look of you, you look." Blind. And I'm like, "How long have you had been on shift?" And she was like, "Going on forty something hours now." And I'm like. I understand, I really do, and I get it, you know, according to Dr. House, the TV show, all patients lie, I've got no reason to lie, I've got reasons to tell you the truth, and those reasons are my daughter, she's 20, she's, gonna, she's turning 21 in literally at 12 days, and I want to be there for her 21st birthday, I've got no reason to lie to you, so please, all I ask is that you just believe me. No track marks. Don't do drugs. Don't drink. Medical records will tell you. No no, no history of drugs. No history of drink. So she looked up my chart. And it said no track of either. And she was like, I, I apologise. I'm like, thank you. Thank you for apologising to me. But you got to understand. I have no want to alter my state of mind the world's already fucked enough as it is so she put these sticker things on me to put me up to an EKG machine and it was going nuts it it those arms were moving like there were legs on a river dancer and she was like you are extremely stressed and I was like you have no idea and so she gave me a Xanax <laughs> and I just laid there Waiting for it to kick in. And I legit was looking at the ceiling. And all I could think of was this is how my dad died. And my father died in the hospital. My father died in King's College Hospital. The hospital I was born in. In fact, ironically, the ward I was born in. Um, if you don't know, hospitals recycle wards, um, especially in the NHS. So a maternity ward, you know, 10 years ago is now A&E or is now X-ray or is now so-and-so they're never kept the same they're constantly cycling constantly cycling I was born on the Izzy Brugger Ward I remember it vividly well not my birth of course but where I'm from um, and that was the same wing of the hospital that my father died so yeah uh, he died of a heart attack, uh, multiple heart attacks. In fact, he had th three before then, and then two while in the hospital. And uh, he died uh, just a little bit older than I am. He died at 45, uh, and uh, I'm 43. So I genuinely talk to myself that I'm, this is it. And I started saying my prayers. I started asking God for forgiveness for the things that I have done. Um, I started asking people in my life for forgiveness who I've wronged. And I know I wronged, and it was wrong of me to do so. Um, but I'm human. I, I error. We error. And um, I... I was getting ready to make my peace with God and then the Xanax kicked in and I started to relax and my blood pressure came down 
and the pain started to go a little bit numb, you know, like in the chest started easing up and whatnot. And eventually she put me on uh, nitrates, which made the pain just completely gone. I was like, oh, thank fucking Christ, I can breathe, you know, because it hurt to breathe. It genuinely hurt. It felt like there was, God, it, it genuinely felt like there was a ton of bricks on my chest. Um, and I could start to breathe and some colour started coming back to me and as I was she was getting ready to discharge me um, she actually wanted me to be admitted uh, in case you know, of any complications but the doctor that had came on duty um, said no we need the bed and yeeted me out um, so, uh, I walked home, yeah, walked home, um, got here, and, um, made a list of the people I need to apologise to, to the people who I've wronged, and, um, and I made a list of the people who wronged me. I didn't realise that uh, that list is twice as long. And I will be reaching out to some people. Um, and I will be doing my best to make amends for wronging them. And uh, growing as a person spiritually, physically, mentally. Um, anyway, back to... The clock, I think, now. Yeah. So I'm now on a stack of new tablets. Um, my doctor said that my vitamin, my, my, my B vitamin levels, my, my, my vitamin B levels were low. My magnesium was low, um, and a few other things. And he said just take some supplements and eat more veggies and, and stuff. So that's what I'm going to be doing on the twentieth. I'm going to be going through, and I'm going to be doing a video. Uh, but it's a video uh, that I'm I'm not sure how you guys are going to take it uh, so I'm not going to talk about it I'm just going to do it I'm going to do it I'm going to put it up and if you guys like it you like it if you don't you don't but I'm, I'm it's <clears throat> it's not going to be my normal uh, sort of content if that makes sense it's going to be a, a camera like this in fact it's going to be this camcorder here um, I'm taking it with me where I'm going uh, and I'm going to be uh, yeah <laughs> anyway hope you like it guys it's, I'm getting back into doing some more uh, vlogging kind of thing you know day to day what I'm doing kind of thing uh, so I'm going to be adding that into the, the rotation of content as well um, I've got to flee up my bum about wanting to buy a house uh, my younger brother owns his own property in fact he's owned three or four properties now uh, my nephew uh, Luke uh, buys and sells properties uh, and he's convinced me that I can buy a property and uh, instead of renting because that's what I'm doing right now I'm renting this room and he said with the right kind of mortgage I would be paying less for the mortgage of a whole house than I do for this room. So I was like, hmm, interesting. So I've got that percolating in my head um, and a few other things. Uh, I need to renew my car license, which means I've got to reset my theory. So yay. Um, if you don't realize here in the UK, um, you have to reset, reset certain portions of your driver's test after certain years, like case in point, but I left for 10 years, so the roads, road laws have changed, so I have to come back and get a refresher course. That's what it is, just a refresher course. Uh, but until then, my driver's license is restricted, which means I can't go on the motorways, I can't go on certain places, I can't go certain places at all. So no race car tracks, no uh, motorway, um, things of that nature. But I can legally own drive alone 
uh, legally own and drive a vehicle. Uh, so there's that. Uh, so I do have my eye on a car that's percolating in the winds as well. Um, so yeah, <laughs> I've got my uh, my eye on a nice little Mini Cooper. Uh, it's it's a homage to my dad. Uh, my dad had a black on black on black uh, from the factory. Black wheels, black top, black interior. Uh, black on black on black. Uh, Sixty. Seven or sixty-eight Cooper S, first generation Cooper S, um, and that was his baby. That really was his baby. Uh, he started dating my mum <laughs> when he had that car, uh, and uh, when my mum fell pregnant with my sister Joanne. Uh, at the time, my dad had two daughters, so the car was perfect for four. But with a fifth one on the way, no. Uh, so he told my mum he sold it when he didn't he actually uh, kept it in a lock up because he didn't have the heart to sell it but uh, my mum found out after my sister was born and made him sell it <laughs> and then uh, about a year later no, two years later I came along uh, and that's when my mum got a, a Volvo hatchback uh, 240SE hatchback as well as a Ford Granada uh, God, and a Vauxhall Cavalier. There's, there's, there's tons of cars my mum went through, but she loved her Ford Granada. Uh, that was her baby. My mum secretly, even though my mum drives a Vauxhall right now, uh, my mum has always been a Ford guy, a Ford fan. Uh, like me, I'm a Ford fan. But everyone else in my family can't stand Fords. Uh, I've been a Ford fan since I was about eight, nine years old, uh, when my uncle Peter uh, showed up in a GT350, a 66 GT350, and Mustang, and on my birthday, St. Patrick's Day, on 17th of March, he pulls up outside my my mum, my nan's house where I was where I was living, and he honks the horn, and he knows I, he knew I had a thing for American cars. I've always had a thing for American cars. My dad had a Cadillac uh, Coupe de Ville, Cadillac Eldorado Coupe de Ville. Anyway, it was a huge Cadillac. The thing was a boat, and I couldn't even touch either sides of the car, sitting in the middle. I loved it, and, I, and it was a convertible, so I was constantly fucking winging around from side to side, side to side. Yeah, you know? loved it, absolutely loved it, and. Um, I remember my dad getting into an accident with a police car. The police car went down the wrong way of a one-way road. And this car's, this Cadillac's so fucking big, there's nowhere he could have gone. And this police car just went wham right at the front of my dad's caddy. Police car was a write-off. My dad's caddy had a dent in the bumper. And all my dad did was take hammer and just wang, smack the dent out of the bumper. <laughs> I love that day. Um, and so, yeah. So I'm getting this Cooper to uh, pay uh, respects to my dad. It's in uh, homage to my dad. Uh, my old license allowed me to drive manuals, but I'm going to be lazy and get an automatic, which means the Cooper I've got my eye on that's for sale is a manual so I'm going to have to get myself an automatic gearbox and it's not that hard to swap them out a couple of bolts impact tools so I'm going to have to buy some tools uh, and uh, a few other bits and pieces but I can easily just do a gearbox swap it's not hard gearbox swaps aren't hard uh, I'm going to need a new flywheel from the motor because the motor will be set up for a manual flywheel not an automatic pressure plate uh, torque converter hopefully the torque converter comes with the gearbox uh, yeah and it really won't be that hard um, on the Cooper the year Cooper I want the, the automatic stick and the, the manual stick are in the exact same hole so no need to cut the floor or anything or even the console or anything of that the third pedal yeah that's going to be a pain in the ass to take out but i'll take that out and 
Bob your uncle Fanny's your aunt um, then I've got to link up the um, gearbox to the brake pedal uh, because automatics they activate through the, the, the brake pedal so case in point when you start an automatic you have to put your foot on the brake turn the key uh, which then tells the transmission to engage you can put it into to, you know, neutral and you can you you guys know this uh, so yeah the uh, reason why I want to go with automatic is because my daughter um, she's learning to drive right now and um, she's going with an automatic license uh, here in the UK you can have a manual license which covers you for manual cars and automatics or you can just get an automatic license when that only covers you for automatics now the reason why she's going with an automatic is because of her age now what I mean by that is here in about 10-15 years the UK is going to try and pass a law that's going to ban uh, combustible engine cars which means we're all going to Teslas, we're all going to EV vehicles and all of those are automatics there is no manual EV vehicles you can buy production wise production car wise you can't go to Tesla and say I want a manual Tesla Model S they'll look and go <laughs> we don't make them they, 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 there's no manual, you can even google this you, you, you can fact check me there is no production so Ford, Chevy, Dodge, Vauxhall, Opel, Porsche, Ferrari, Lamborghini, there, there is none. Not a single mass manufactured, okay, mass manufactured EV vehicle that comes in a manual. They're all automatic. They're all shifted by the onboard computer. So therefore, no. You can temporarily put an EV vehicle into a manual mode. Okay, you can do it with the Teslas and whatnot. I noticed because I've got a Tesla dealership just down the road from me. I even asked them. Okay, you can put it temporarily in manual mode, but once the battery goes below a certain percentage, it automatically switches over to manual uh, to, to automatic mode to save on your battery. It will tell you you're shifting inefficiently. So, with that case, manual licenses will not be needed anymore. Because there won't be any manual cars, there'll only just be automatics. So she's future-proofing her license, basically. Plus, it's her life. If she wants, if she wants to just drive automatics, it's entirely up to her. If she just wants to drive manuals, it's entirely up to her. I'm her father. I'm not her keeper. So there's that. This is probably one of the longest coffee times I've done in a while. But um, health-wise, so yeah, um, there's the blood clot in my head. It's not a tumor. My doctor made it abundantly clear it is not a tumor. It is a blood clot, um, which means it could rupture at any time. Um, <laughs> so yeah, he was like, yeah, congratulations. You've got a time bomb going off that could go off at random in your head. So, and if it goes off, it could kill me. So. So, good news, bad news. Kind of thing. So, I am just going to live my life. Um, he did put me on a different blood thinner. In hopes that it will um, work. So, I'll be picking that up. Uh, in about 45 minutes to an hour from now um, let's hope it works eh <laughs> let's just hope it works if not say lovey it is what it is well coffee's gone means the video is over. I love you all. Stay safe. Stay sane. Stay sexy. Keep your stress flying. Keep your enemies dying. Copacabana is out. And I'll see you sexy bitches in the next one.